G'day guys and welcome. All right, I'm going to show you something today. It's a little interesting. It's called lens whacking. What is lens whacking? Uh, well, basically it's lens whacking or lens, um, the other, the other thing to call it is, is lens, lensing. Uh, what it is, is you're going to basically create a kind of an interesting effect. Let's say you, you want a, a tilt, uh, shift lens. But you don't have the tens of thousands of billions of gazillions of dollars to buy one. What you can do is you can kind of get the same effect using different types of lenses. Now I'm just going to use this for demonstration purpose. These these DX lenses uh, or lenses with uh, without a manual aperture, the electronic aperture, you can't use them. You have to use an older lens, kind of like this one here. But I'm just because this will be my subject for now. Uh, what happens is you, you set it wide open. And you're probably best off to use a lens that is uh, going to be, I, maybe say, less than telephoto. I can get away with a 70 mm lens doing this, but not easily. So I'm going to use it in 18. And this will give you some extreme macro shots. It will give you some, uh, uh, some uh, really cool kind of dreamy kind of like effects. But what you're going to do is number one, hold on to your camera very, very tightly and securely, like you would normally do. And instead of putting the lens into the camera, you're just going to kind of cradle the, cam the lens like this. And what you'll do is you'll look through. Now, in this case, the aperture is kind of closed, so it's, it's really dark and I can't really see much. But I can see something. And then you can move closer or further from it, and you'll get different effects. Now, it doesn't work with this lens uh, because uh, it might work outside, but uh, again, you would shoot wide open. You're going to have to put your camera in manual mode. In fact, what I'll probably do is, uh, I'll take the other one. Uh, so, you're going to probably, depending on the light, if you're in direct light, you probably won't see anything. You'll be overexposed no matter what you do. It takes a little bit of a getting used to. But what I'm going to do is actually, because this lens actually works quite well. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off of the, eh, this camera. I am still working on that, still working on it. I almost had it working the other day, but, yeah, well, so I'm going to open it up to 3.8. This is a 75 to 150 uh, de jour lens. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it on infinity, open it right up, so it's wide open. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my camera nice and securely again. And I'm, going to look, oh, I'm looking at the wrong end of my camera here. Do that okay so what I'm gonna do is now the lighting isn't perfect in here what I'm doing but eh. it's kind of like the way you shoot macro you're gonna move into your subject and you, you'll move the lens back and forth just to focus and you'll get different effects so I'm in bulb so I gotta go to about a 30th of a second and get near get near 10th, 20th, 30th. That should be enough now. Hang on. There we go. So that, that should have done it. it. Takes a little while to study. The bigger the lens, the harder it is. So, oh yeah, okay, yeah, here we go. So I got this really washed out from one side, and I'll show you the pictures at the end. So that kind of worked. So now I'm gonna maybe take it from this angle. Uh, where you move, because there's going to be light seeping in between the camera and the lens, right? So there, the further away you are, the more washout you're going to get. But you could also get pretty extremely close. And, whoop, hang on. I want to do that. There you go. I want that. Yeah, there you go. So I'll get my Pentex right about there. And maybe I'll go 30th of a second again. There we go. And it will take you a few, yeah, like this one's almost completely dreamily washed out. But you can do it if I do it outside. I'll, I'll do one shot outside. Uh, and I'll, I'll do a couple of shots and uh, I've got some plants here. And I'll show you. And it gives you a, just a different effect. So it kind of looks like an overexposure, but yet kind of like a macro. Not really a macro, but kind of like a macro. 
Uh, and you can also use it like a tilt shift lens. Again, it takes a little bit of practice. Play around with it. Uh, let's see. Maybe start off close and then work your way, work your way back out. And that one's going to be really washed. And you have to play around with the shutter speed too. Uh, yeah, there we go. That one's almost. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. So let's see here. Distance is right. And maybe too close here. And then, whoop. <laughs> Again, it takes a little bit of practice to do this. There you go. So anyway, I'm just going to do that for the... Uh... That one's actually kind of cool. That one's actually kind of cool. And yeah, the there are drawbacks to doing this, though. Number one, your camera is open and exposed, so don't do this where it's windy and, expo and, and, and stuff like that. Because that won't be good for you. That, that would be bad for your camera. So th that's one thing. The other thing is, is that the camera in itself, uh, when you're moving, manipulating the lens, what you're going to find is that uh, you're going to either let in a lot of light or not enough light, and you'll get too much wash, not enough wash. Uh, getting the shutter speed is really difficult. But play around with it. You might be able to get some pretty cool effects with it. It's called lens whacking or lensing. Interesting. Not something I'm going to do too often. But uh, also, too, like, for example, this is a really cool lens. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, this is a really cool lens. This is a uh, de jour lens. I don't know how old it is. Hopefully it's not a radioactive lens. But it doesn't seem to have the... Uh, the thorium tint to it, but anyway, uh, this is an older lens. It does not fit on my Nikon. It's a Pentex lens, right? But it allows you to use that. If you keep it tight up to the um, to the uh, to the to the bot camera body, you'd be surprised. And I'll, I got some other photos of a, that I'll throw in there where I had the I was using this lens on that camera. So there's a couple of little things you can. It's a useful useful tool for a few things so you got a lens but it, it doesn't fit your camera but you might be able to get away with it as long as it's not a dirty area so just watch you don't get a lot of dirt and dust in your camera and uh, yeah so anyway I'll leave it at that so uh, yeah I'll show you the photos that I got with this lens on this camera doing lens whacking and stuff like that and there's a little, you play around with it and see what you get it'll take a little while to get something good out of it but you might get something cool out of it Okay, here's some of the shots that I took uh, while doing the lens whacking. The lens I'm using is a uh, de jour 75 to 150. It was off my Pentex. It's actually a nice lens, and I was using my Nikon D100. So you can see here's the Pentex camera. You can see there's a it's really soft, but yet it's sharp where it needs to be sharp. And you, again, you just move the, the lens back and forth in front of the camera to get it as sharp as you want. But you can see how the light comes in. I, I can't believe I got this shot. Now, I did advance this or uh, edit this uh, one a little bit, but you can get the idea of how kind of a dreamy look it gets, and the depth of field is, ex you know, exceptionally uh, shallow, which is a really cool effect. So you can get a, you can see how I got the cockpit really in sharp here, and then a uh, little extra washout light, depending on how far you move the lens from the camera. Depends how much washout you get, but you will find that you're pretty much going to have to have your camera in manual mode to do this uh, if you got a digital. Uh, on a film camera, it might be a little bit different. Uh, you're probably still going to be into uh, into digital too, uh, or into manual mode. But the thing is, is you're going to have to play around where the shutter speed and the aperture you'll have to play around with a lot to see what you can do but one of the advantages again if you have lenses that are not proprietary to your camera uh, you can use lenses from other cameras and let's say you've got uh, a Canon and an Icon and you just want to take uh, one lens from the other you can put it in front just to see what happens but again be careful because the camera will be exposed to dirt and stuff like that because it's open anyway I'll leave it at that so Hope you enjoy and play around with see what you guys get. Have a great day. Eh?